Hey guys, it's Melissa Morrow with Vintage Bee Design and I decided I would come on live again and try to do a quick craft. So I have picked up three of these rounds from, um, I believe these were from Michaels and I think I paid like $2.50, $2.99, something like that each. And I also have a jar of beads and I'm gonna make little risers for, um, for fall. I also have a, a nice Klingon 045, that is my oval 45. And I have the, let's see, this is the Autumn Essentials pack from Redesign with Prima. And let's see, who is here? If you are joining me, then please say hi and where you are joining us from. So let's go ahead and get started. I know most of the time when we see fall crafts, they are done in autumnal colors. Today I'm gonna to be using Dixie Belle paint and I'm gonna go for something a little different. And I'm gonna be using, this is one of my favorite color combinations and it always sells when I use it. This is Mason Dixon Gray, Vintage Duck Egg and Fluff by Dixie Belle. Hi Judy, how are you? So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna start in the middle. You know what, Sue Ann, would you give me some paper towels? I forgot to grab paper towels. Thank you. Sue is in the other room. So I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'm going to base paint these all the same. So I'm actually just going to start by putting some white dots kind of in the middle. I know it seems a little weird. Okay. And now I'm not even going to bother changing brushes. Um, so my blending will be very rough today, but that's okay. I don't feel like washing brushes tonight, to be honest. So I'm going to add some vintage duck egg and I'm just going to swirl around. I know this is going to look like a hot mess for a couple minutes. Those of you who are really good at blending, um, just keep your cringe to yourself. It's okay. I get it. I'm going to just blot a little of that off. And then I'm going to go in with my Mason Dixon, which I'm going to be honest is really thick. I probably need to add some water to it, but who's got time for that right now? And I'm going to go around the outside of this. You can see I'm super sloppy right now. This is not fine and delicate work. My hands are gonna get messy because I should have done the outside first. Outside, outside first. Okay. I'm gonna be smarter on this one and do the outside ring first. So I have a place to put my hand while I'm painting. So what are you guys up to? It is Thursday night. Anybody have anything exciting planned for the weekend? So I'm gonna bother you again. Um, I'm getting a lower power. Uh, yeah. She was trying to relax on the sofa. I seem to be making that very difficult for her. Saturday night, my husband and I celebrate 34 years of wedded bliss. Well, something, something like that anyway. I don't have a cube over here, do you? Do not have a cube over here. Oh, for crying out loud. And so you're probably wondering what we're doing for our anniversary how we're celebrating 34 years. Uh, oh, oh. My husband is going out to celebrate um, karate with some of the guys that he goes to karate with. Some of the guys are getting their black belt that he goes to karate with several times a week. And uh, Sue and I are babysitting the grandbabies. Hey, so, so now I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna swirl into the center. Did you see how I did that? I'm gonna clean off my brush again, just wiping it on the paper towel. 
I'm gonna start on the outside. I'm gonna do it on this one. Let's start on the outside, and I'm just gonna swirl into the middle. Okay? Did you catch that? I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna start on the outside, and I'm gonna swirl into the middle. Let's see, I see some, hi Bonnie, hi Judy. Judy is working today, celebrating your son-in-law's birthday. Very nice. How old is he? Hi, Christy. Hi, Kit. Hi, Susan. Hi, Judy from Kansas. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to make a little bit of noise here for a second. I'm going to get these dry. Or you shake. She's plugging me in over here. There we go. We're going to set it up a little dangerous. I'm just going to try to make this cord a little bit, maybe. I know it's not looking like much yet. You got to give it a minute. And we are alive, so you can see that I'm not trying anything special here. This is just pretty basic. Okay, it's um, because my paint is really thick, it's a little bumpy. So um, in order to have a nice smoother finish, I like to just give it a quick sand between coats. I am not worried about perfection here. I'm definitely going to have some brush strokes. None of that is going to bother me. But you will get a nicer piece if you sand between coats. Hi, Candy. Thank you. Thank you. I am looking forward to the grandbabies. And I was talking to my, um, my youngest daughter, who is pregnant. She is due September 12th that on Monday, um, when she had her regular doctor's appointment, she is already at six pounds and, I thought it was six pounds, uh, seven ounces, almost seven pounds. So she is a tiny, tiny little thing. So we are suspecting that she is not going to make it to her due date. And if you're watching me from Georgia, we will be in Perry, Georgia next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend uh, at the Georgia County Fairgrounds for Vintage Market Days in Perry, Georgia. What is John saying? John is telling me weights, I think, here. Uh, 14 ounces. <laughs> All right, so now you can see I have my first layer and I've kind of roughly sanded in between. And we've got a little bit of blending going on. It's clearly very rough blending at the moment. What? And so I am going to do exactly what I did before. Just put, I'm using Dixie Bell's fluff, little dab of fluff in the middle. Nice and juicy. And I'm going to add some vintage duck egg, just sort of in a circle around it. Nice and juicy. And now I'm going to use my mason. I think our internet is down. Oh no, I'm back. 
Hopefully I didn't lose everybody there. Six pounds, 14 ounces. That's what John was trying to say. Okay, so now I did an inner circle of fluff, a middle circle of vintage duck egg, and an outer circle of Mason Dixon gray. And I'm doing that to all three of these again. This is my second coat of this. Gosh, my Mason Dixon gray is really thick. Okay. You can kind of see my fingerprints there. I'm going to take a misting bottle because this is so thick and just give this a little bit more water. And now I'm going to take and I'm gonna take my circle around and then I'm just gonna swirl it again into the center. You know what, I had too much Mason Dixon on there so I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna go in reverse order this time. I'm gonna add some duck egg, some fluff, and some wool. too much paint on my brush. Now it's just becoming a gray blob. Forgot to clean it in between. So we're gonna go swirl it in the middle. That's a little better. It's not perfect. Let me clean up my brush a little better. Sometimes this is the problem when you are one, rushing, and two, Um, your paint is a little too thick and you're doing multiples at one time. So I'm just going to swirl it there. Really have lost some of my definition because my brush has gotten too muddy. So I'm gonna pounce it back just by adding a little more paint on here. thing about blending is that you can always go in and just add more paint. But you do want to be careful that, you know, I'm going to go from the center this time and work my way out. I think that's going to work better. Um, if you have too much paint on your brush, it will become muddy. Just a little bit what's happening here. but you can always just add your colors right back in. And really the only effect I'm going for with this is I want my center to be a little bit lighter. And all this bright light on here is really making it hard to see too. Let me go ahead and dry this. I'll try to drop my heat down. It is storming outside. It has been pouring, pouring rain all day. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a light sand again. Some fresh sandpaper though. That sandpaper can use a bunch. There you can kind of start to see the a little bit of a circle in the middle. Well, it's a little lighter. It might be hard to tell on camera, but here in person you actually can see 
the three different colors a little better. But I have really bright lights on to, so that you can see, because this section of the house is very dark. I just wanna make sure this is all the way dry. We're gonna add some transfers, so. Okay. I'm going to flip these over and let these dry for a minute this way. And I'm going to, um, hopefully, oh shoot. See, I'm going to bug you one more time. I'm sorry. I need a battery. Battery? A battery. My, my, my glue gun battery apparently died. Sorry. Hi, glue gun. All right. So let me go ahead and take these tags off while Sue is getting me. A battery. I had that heating up, but <sighs> best laid plans of my sleep. Fortunate, it heats up very fast. Ooh, it's still very hot. Is it? Oh, so I might still have some heat on that. Okay. So these being circles, I don't really feel like I need to have four. I think three is probably fine. Um, I just need to make sure they are all the same size. And I have a bunch of different beads in this jar. So let's look for a couple of different options. Yep. Okay. I just stole this one off of John's drill, so. Gotta get the other ones out of the car, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna use, I'm using, um, this is Gorilla Glue Hot Glue. And honestly, I think it, on my Ryobi um, hot glue gun, Honestly, I think this is almost as good as E6000. After this is fully dry on here, it actually becomes really difficult to get them off. Once the glue is dried all the way. And my daughter calling me, I will have to call her back. Page. Okay. Get rid of all these little fuzzes. Hopefully these are nice and dry all the way Okay. So I do want to make sure that they are dry enough that my transfers will actually stick to them. If they are not dry all the way, then what ends up happening is your glue, your paint will actually stick to the transfer and not the other way around. If, you, if I was not doing this live, my recommendation would be actually to wait overnight to batch paint out a whole bunch of things and then, um, then break out your transfers the next day and have fun decorating them. But we're doing live, so we don't have time for that. It is very rumbly out there. So here are my choices. And this is the fun part. Hi, Trisha. Hey, Rashonda. They look like concrete stepping stones. Oh, cool. I like that idea. Oh, candy. Okay, so let's let's think about how I want to do this. I I really love this one right here, this mushrooms one. And I am gonna have a lot of mushroom decor in my booth next weekend. So let's see. I'm not gonna want that heart for sure. And they come with sticks. So I like where that's going. 
One of the things I love about these mini transfers is they're perfect for these small projects, but I feel like I get so much value out of them for stuff that I can sell in my booth and at market. Uh, these are only, um, what, I think they're 16 $16? Yeah, $16. We sell them for $16. All three sheets. Pretty much almost all of these are, are going to be like a different project. So it makes, you know, it to be like a dollar to embellish a project like this. Definitely a good ROI. And I think they come off really nicely. You see, you just rub it with a stick until it's coming off. And if you if you see any of it still stuck to the plastic like I did a minute ago there, then all you do is you just go right back over it with the stick until you find that it all sets. I'm always anxious because, you know, I'm doing this live. And so I don't want to make you guys wait. So sometimes I do... Did you see what I did there? I call that riding the wave. If you push, when you've already started, you already have to be like already stuck. If you add just a little bit of air under your plastic, just a little bit of air, not much, just a little bit, and you push your, your wrap, you can actually, I call it riding the wave. You basically push your, your transfer down and the air will push it off. It's kind of a neat trick. The only thing is, is sometimes, sometimes it will crack the transfer on large patterns. But I don't actually mind that look. But I miss questions. Hi, Trina. Thanks for joining me, guys. those rumbly rumblies outside here can you hear all the thunder boy if I was at my last house we'd already have lights out we would have made it through the day we'd already be without power don't you think so did y'all see Sue and the big boy the reel I put up was Sue and the big boy Yet she wanted to bring home from shopping. Mm. Did you vote Bob? Or did you vote no Bob? Okay, so look how pretty that is. And like, I really like it with the background, the, the background colors. It's just a pretty neutral. Let's see. I think we'll do the give thanks on this one. I don't know, I like the give thanks on this one. And I don't personally think that um, everything fall has to be in, you know, pumpkin spice colors. I live in the South. So we still have a lot of coastal colors, even in our fall. So these, these purpley uh, grays and duck eggs and things like that, they're very popular in my area this time of year. And you'll see when part of it lifts up, you just lay it right back down. It's so forgiving. Oh, I just think that's so cute. Okay, this one's very rustic because this one has like sort of gnarly wood in it. So let's see what we can do to make it kind of fitting for that. <coughs> I think I wanted this other mushroom. I really like that. Let's 
see how I want to layer this. me thinking about the process. I think I'm just going to go ahead and go with this. After you um, get these down, you want to be sure to add either a top coat or a wax over it to seal this transfer in. I'm definitely going to be using a top coat because I expect somebody to probably use this to put like their hot cocoa mug or their coffee mug, something like that on, um, or possibly putting food on. The one top coat you do not want to use when you are using transfers though, is Gator Hide. Um, Gator Hide is great to create maximum durability. However, I'm not sure exactly why, but anytime you use Gator Hide, maybe not every time, but often enough that it becomes a problem. When I use Gator Hide with transfers, it actually seeps under the transfers and makes the transfers lift. So you do not want to use Gator Hide. It is not recommended to use Gator Hide um, when you are using transfers. A couple good layers of a nice top coat or like DIY's liquid patina, something like that would be a better choice than Gator Hide. I'm pretty sure you could use Big Top, um, but you cannot use Gator Head. And I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of push this transfer into those rough areas. Okay, so I got my mushrooms there. I'm kind of really digging this butterfly. I don't know. I think I want this, this green butterfly. I think he's pretty cool. I really like the... side better. We're very sad at our new um, workshop. The mama duck moved her babies and we haven't seen the babies since the day they hatched. So we hope they're doing okay. We don't have an update because she took them away. I guess she didn't like all the commotion in the space since we moved in. It had it had people there before, but I don't think they were around very much. I'm gonna go with the maybe let there be pumpkin spice. Yeah, I think that one. So we got the fun of seeing the cute little babies hatch, but that's it. They're gone already. Maybe there's a pond by us. Maybe when they get a little bigger, we'll see them over at the little pond. I don't know. We, we were hoping maybe she'd just move them to the pond and we would still kind of get to see them from a distance, but we haven't seen them at the pond yet. Two down. What do you think? I think they're looking pretty darn cute. And one to go. stem come off 
the edge. Just like that. I'm not even going to actually use the edge of that. There we go. Some acorns and pine cones. I'm starting to get hungry for dinner. Did you guys, have you eaten yet? Are you off eating now? Are you watching me and eating? My tummy is starting to think about some food. That is for sure. love how easy these are to do. They're fast, they're easy, they're fun. You get to be creative. They're inexpensive, I mean, relatively speaking. You know, if you use them all on one project, it can be expensive, but if you're, if you're sort of doling it out over multiple projects, I think they're very, very, um, cost effective because I think they just add so much. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to take my pumpkin. bow down here. I've got some bows on here. Oh, maybe I like this one. I think I like this one. I'm giving all these great elements to they just stick right over each other. And if you see any of it's not sticking, you just lay it back down and give it a rub. And there we go. So cute. Now, do we want maybe the happy fall? Where did that go? Where did I put the happy fall, y'all? Seriously, I had it right here earlier. There it is. Now all that's left is to add a top coat and these three little projects are all done. What do you think? I think they're super, super cute. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. 
And that's it for me tonight. I'm gonna clean up my mess and then I'm gonna go work on some dinner because I am hungry. I will thank you. talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed today's project. It was a lot of fun to do with you. Um, if you did like the video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and share it with a friend. It really helps to grow the channel. Thanks so much for joining me today.